Reading a book, in just three minutes, today, we are reading, The Molecule of More. Many people believe that dopamine is simply something that brings us pleasure. However, this book will help us discover that dopamine can influence our entire lives and even the world. The book presents three aspects to help us understand dopamine. First, what is dopamine? When we look up, we see things like paintings on the ceiling or the scenery outside the window, things we have to strive to reach. When we look down, we see things like computers, cups, and phones, things we already have at this moment. These correspond to two modes of thinking in our brains, downward thinking and upward thinking. Downward thinking allows us to enjoy what we currently possess and experience satisfaction. The molecules that control this thinking are known as present molecules, including neurotransmitters such as serotonin, oxytocin, and endorphins. Upward thinking attempts to push us beyond ourselves, motivating us to control, pursue, and create. The molecule that controls this thinking is dopamine. From the perspective of dopamine, having something is boring, it's only when we obtain something that it becomes interesting. Dopamine always makes us want more. And it provides us with a significant amount of pleasure when we receive something that exceeds our expectations. It is not a molecule of happiness but a molecule of anticipation. This is why some people become addicted to gambling, constantly change partners. Or become obsessed with making money regardless of how much they earn. To prevent us from falling into desire, our bodies have developed two dopamine circuits. Just as rocket fuel propels a rocket upward but can also control its backward movement. Dopamine flows through the circuit in the midbrain edge, which we call the desire circuit. It generates desires and impulses, and most successful products stimulate this circuit effectively. The circuit from the midbrain to the cortex, which we call the control circuit, allows us to plan, think, and create. It is through these two circuits that we become human, endowed with special powers that elevate our thinking to the abstract level of truth, justice, and beauty. So, how does dopamine impact our lives? People can be divided into two categories, conservatives and liberals. Those with higher levels of present molecules are good at socializing, empathetic, and we call them conservatives. Those with higher levels of dopamine are creative and enjoy pursuing new things, and we call them liberals. Conservatives possess a strong present system and are content with the status quo, often feeling happy. They oppose radicalism and want to help people achieve immediate happiness. Liberals excel at synthesizing past experiences, and they have higher intelligence. However, high levels of dopamine inhibit the functioning of present molecules, often resulting in poor interpersonal relationships. Many celebrities or artists are liberals, which is why they become more obsessed with pursuing material wealth, are never satisfied with the present, and have divorce rates twice as high as ordinary people. Liberals want to improve future life for others, which has led to the rapid development of technology and various sources of pleasure that cater to our desires. However, dopamine makes them perpetually dissatisfied and continually generates new desires. If this development is uncontrolled, such as when artificial intelligence can satisfy sensory desires like touch and sex, we may no longer need partners or even have the desire to reproduce. In fact, it could lead to our own destruction when it becomes capable of self-evolution. So, how can we overcome our obsession with more? Excessive dopamine leads to the distress of excessive energy, making it impossible for us to stop working. While excessive present molecules result in the laziness of happiness. Both extremes are highly unhealthy. How can they achieve balance? The book suggests four methods. First, mastery. Mastering something allows us to simultaneously satisfy the needs of both present molecules and dopamine. For example, if you master cooking and create a table full of delicious food after hard work, dopamine achieves its goal and you utilize all your physical and operational resources. At the same time, it allows the present molecules to function, enabling you to enjoy the entire process. 
Second, pay attention to reality. Dopamine enjoys the prediction errors of rewards, and reality is always the richest source of surprises. For instance, when you travel to an unfamiliar place, even an ordinary shop or tree can pique your interest. So, when you eat, savor the meal, when you go out, appreciate the scenery. Unexpectedly delightful flavors and breathtaking views allow you to simultaneously satisfy the needs of dopamine and present molecules. Third, avoid multitasking. Immersive focus enhances almost all experiences. Blindly succumbing to dopamine and engaging in multitasking does not increase efficiency, instead, it decreases efficiency, leading to a lack of dopamine rewards and an inability to appreciate the present happiness. Finally, create. Creation is an excellent way to blend dopamine and present molecules together. For example, activities like hand painting or repairing things require us to put aside our phones and the fast-paced internet. They involve the coordination of our brains and hands to conceive and plan. Turning ideas into reality. Finally, I'd like to share a quote from the book to conclude today's reading. As humans embark on journeys to the stars and seas, dopamine undoubtedly plays a significant role, belonging to this greedy yet captivating molecule.